getting over um, a cold. So my voice is gonna sound a little bit scratchy, okay? Today we're gonna be talking about um, some famous landmarks. Uh, now there are landmarks all over the world, <clears throat> all over the world, um, but there are some ones that you may want to visit in the future that are right in the U.S. So I wanted to give you a, an idea of where those are at um, and what the real history is behind them. Okay? Okay, right in the state of Wyoming, there is a place called Bears Lodge. And that's the real name. Um, the white colonizers that came out, they named it Devil's Tower, which is um, quite disgusting when you, you know, finally know that it was actually a place um, that was sacred to us. Uh, my people, the Northern Cheyenne, among other tribes, um, would go there for prayer and for meetings. Um, so, yeah, please don't call it Devil's Tower. Um, it's definitely Bears Lodge, and it's beautiful. So there's a special lake in Oregon. It's called Crater Lake. Crater Lake. Um, it was created when um, a volcano collapsed in on itself. Um, now, this was thousands of years ago. Um, 7,000, I believe. Uh, 7,000 years ago. So today though, it is um, one of the most beautiful spots to visit in Oregon. However, be warned, um, it is a very mystical place and a lot of people go missing. Not joking. There's even a um, dead tree. I know this is strange. There's a dead tree that floats straight up perpendicular it floats straight up and it's been doing so for hundreds of years i believe at least over a hundred years it's a mystery to people why it's doing that so it's just one of the many reasons why that place is very mystical in fact that um, tree it was actually taken by scientists and they put a rope around it to move it in order to do some diving or something down there. Anyway, um, and when that happened, a storm immediately broke out so badly that they were fearful and they let the, they untied um, that tree and they let it go and immediately the storm stopped. Um, but yeah, it's called the old man. Okay, let's talk about the Grand Canyon. Now the Grand Canyon, um, the place where I actually saw it was in Arizona. Um, I was taken there by some other um, natives that were friends of mine. And I actually got to see part of the canyon that um, tourists don't get to see. Yeah, that place is absolutely amazing. It's obviously the largest canyon in the world. The natives there, they would build little houses there called hogans. Uh, really interesting. The Hogans, uh, they're round in shape, but when they would die, when the people that built them would pass away, um, they would then um, lock it up, lock up the Hogan, the family would, and just leave it. I actually tried to enter one and um, I was, yeah, I was told, no, I can't do that. Um, and I said, why? And because in the Navajo belief system, um, they believe that their relatives will come back um, from time to time to check on it. So it has to remain in the same state that it was when they died, um, which I respect, you know, that's their belief. Also um, in the Grand Canyon, there are like bodies of little people that have been discovered. I was even told that there was a tiny horse um, that was discovered in the Grand Canyon. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's definitely one of the um, most beautiful and creepy places you can visit in the US. So the Hollywood sign of Hollywood, California. I've actually seen it, not up close, but I have seen it from a distance. And 
it's really um, kind of awe-inspiring. Um, I guess because I'm an American, so I grew up with, you know, uh, movies. And so yeah, the Hollywood sign. Um, it's definitely very iconic. But anyway, there's a woman in the 1930s, I believe 1932, her name was Peg Entwistle. She really wanted to become famous. Now she was working as a model and an actress, but she never really got her big break. Uh, at some point she became depressed enough to where she ended her, her existence by, you know, jumping off one of the letters. So Hollywood sign is off limits to people visiting it up close. Um, but some people that still go up there illegally um, have been known to report seeing her apparition. So, but yeah, the Hollywood sign. Okay, Mount Rushmore. Let's talk about that. <clears throat> now, Mount Rushmore Maybe you're not aware of the controversy, controversy that is surrounding that place. Um, but it was known as the mountain of the grandfather, something like that. Um, that's what it translated to, to my people. Um, it was sacred to the Cheyenne people, um, my people and the Sioux. Um, it was the Lakota. They, it was sacred to them and to both of us. Um, for my people, it was because that was the mountain, that sweet medicine went to, um, like that's where his body is. When he knew he was going to die, he went to that mountain and walked into the mountain, he and his wife did, and they're still there today. So according to, um, my tribal belief system he and his wife are there and they will be there until the end of days um when that time comes where when it's time for the end of the world to start to begin um he will wake up and come back what did the white colonizing government decide to do well first they allowed colonizers to come and mine to mine it for gold. Then in, I believe it was the 1920s and 30s, um, they started building the faces of the presidents um, on the side of it. Right where, right where the uh, face, the natural face that was there originally um, of the old grandfather. They put it right over the top of it. Um, which is kind of symbolic for what the American government um, has done, you know, all over, all over this land. Anyway, so they try to appease um, the Native Americans by carving another statue out of rock of Crazy Horse. Now, Crazy Horse was a warrior of Sioux origin. He was Lakota and Crazy Horse had never wanted to have an image taken of himself. He said that it was evil. He never wanted a, a photograph or a painting or a, a sculpture. He never wanted an image of himself made. So how does the colonizing government decide to appease us? They take one of our, our heroes. Doesn't even look Native American, in my opinion. So to this day, there's a big controversy over that area. Um, the U.S. government, they will not let us near it. We are not allowed to go near it. And they also 
um, tried to buy off the native people uh, with, you know, money to to buy the mountain. And the Indian tribes, the native tribes said, no way, you can't buy that mountain. It's not for sale. It's it's sacred. It's for the native people. Um, but the U.S. government doesn't learn. They don't learn from their from their actions, from their mistakes. But anyways, if you would like to go see it, feel free. But to me, when I see it, all I see is something cheap. Yeah, Mount Rushmore. Now, one of my videos, I talked about the Columbia River Gorge. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I would say the center of that region, of that gorge, would probably be um, Hood River. Uh, just a beautiful place. Um, you know, people, there's water sports that people do, windsurfing. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, that place, though, uh, the river itself wasn't there in the way that it is today day um previously it was kind of a white water a white water river um but of course the government wanted to dam it so they ended up um flooding many native towns and non-native towns to be fair um they put up a dam they flooded those areas and now the river is like what you see today because of the Bonneville Dam. Um, but the Columbia River Gorge is more than just the water there. Um, it's the, the rock, the essence, I live there. That place is definitely, um, there's a presence and it's palpable. Now in the Columbia River Gorge, there are lots of petroglyphs, petroglyphs. And there are also, well, there is a special one that was, we're going to talk about today called, in English, it's She Who Watches. And forgive me if I totally uh, destroy this pronunciation because this is not my tribe, but it's Tisagalo. I don't know. Anyway, she was um, considered a goddess of one of the tribes in that area. And so there's a petroglyph um, with her image. What's really weird is there's one image that's almost exactly the same image, but it's in uh, in Montana near my people. It's in the high rocks of Billings, Montana, which is totally it blows me away. Totally blows me away. It shows really how connected tribes are more than they realize, I think. And oh, and I forgot to mention. Um, Multnomah Falls. I've been there a million times. Now there is a legend about Multnomah Falls that a young girl and her boyfriend, uh, he, he was a warrior, I guess, of two different tribes. Um, it's kind of a Romeo and Juliet story. They went up or they wanted to be together and they couldn't be. So they decided to end their existence together by jumping off the top of the falls area. So they do say at times you can um, see them falling and see them at the bottom, uh, the pool of it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's not cool that they died, but you know, it's kind of neat that, that you can see history come alive you know, Multnomah Falls is beautiful. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm glad I got to talk to you about some landmarks and some history. Um, hopefully you learned some new vocabulary. And, um, you know, inshallah, my voice is going to be a little bit more normal in the next video. Okay? Thanks very much, guys. Bye-bye.